Hi everyone, I'm Vinod and welcome to Career Bold. Of late, there has been a lot of conversations around the topic of moonlighting and double jobs in the Indian IT sector, the tech industry. So I thought I'll dig a little deeper into what's moonlighting, what's dual employment, why does it happen? What are the consequences? How is it even discoverable by the companies? We'll also talk a little bit about what you can do uh, if you're caught in that scenario and what is the long-term impact for both the employers and the employees. So let's jump straight into it. So the traditional definition of moonlighting is that you're probably doing two jobs at the same time. And it means that you're doing one full-time job and you're trying to manage another full-time job at the same time as you're doing a first job. It's also called dual employment. So recently, the Indian company Wipro came up with a lot of strictures around this topic of moonlighting. They ended up firing around 300 employees. They said that moonlighting is perfectly not okay. This is terrible and so on. And Infosys recently again came up with similar rules around this topic of dual employment. And they did identify multiple people and they got fired. So the big takeaway from what's happening with the big Indian IT companies is that you cannot be doing two full-time jobs at the same time. And let's look at why does it happen? Like what's the motivations for people to be getting into it? So I think part of the reason is if, especially if you're early on in your career, the, there has been a stagnation with respect to IT compensation for decades. So I think the average compensation around 10, 15 years back was around three lakhs per year, which is around probably five, six thousand dollars a year for an entry level computer science graduate. And unfortunately, it has been almost the same compensation even after a decade in many of these Indian IT outsourcing companies. So the first question you may ask is why aren't they increasing the compensation? So the problem with trying to hire people at a very early phase in their career is that they don't really have too many skills. So the companies really have to invest in these employees to make them trainable and end, end up giving them a lot of skill enhancement programs. So because the company investing a lot, they don't see it meaningful to keep throwing money at these people who don't have enough skills. The same companies, if they're going to some of the other campuses like the IITs, they end up giving offers of nine lakhs, 10 lakhs and so on. But with many of the traditional companies, they still end up giving a very low base salary. And the other reason is also that there's such a flood of engineering talent in India and a lot of computer science students in India that they can always find students. They don't need to pay more. That's how the labor market works. So if you can easily find people at the price point at which you are able to give your salary, then you will not pay more. If you're not getting enough people, that's when you pay more. So that's been the logic of the companies. And the reason why is Employees are also doing moonlighting is because they feel that their compensation is pretty stagnant. Uh, they're at the early phase in their career. They're thinking of buying a house. They're thinking of buying a car and so on. But unfortunately, the co compensation they get currently is not enough for them to make these expensive purchases. So they think that, okay, now I'm doing all remote work. I'm not going to office. So why don't I join a company and also apply to another company at the same time, do two jobs and get paid for both the jobs. So that really is the intent driving some of these uh, employees. And when you're looking at the consequences, many of these tech companies have deals signed up with US companies in terms of taking care of their IT backend uh, to take care of their outsourcing efforts and so on. There's a lot of confid data confidentiality, which is part of the agreement, which means that the people who are working on these projects should not be sharing this data with anyone else, which primarily means that the people working on these projects should not be doing any other job at the same time. That's the terms and conditions of the contract which Indian companies sign with the US uh, tech companies. This basically means that you cannot do two jobs. They're just not okay. Even across the world, not just in India, but when you're doing one full-time job, you cannot do a second full-time job at the same time because a full-time job is supposed to be giving you a minimum standard of uh, compensation by which you can afford the basic amenities of life. You don't need to be doing two jobs to survive. And in the US, we'll hear about people doing two to three jobs to live. But remember, they are not three full-time jobs. They are three part-time jobs. So there's a clear difference between full-time and part-time jobs. In terms of 
managers, they have to be very careful because it's very possible that you have two tech companies working on very similar projects. Now, will the employee transfer information from one project to the other, from one company to the other? There can be enormous problems with data confidentiality and um, the clients will absolutely not like a scenario where the employee working on their projects are also working on a different project. So there's a lot of consequences for both the company. They can end up losing contracts. They can end up losing uh, contracts worth hundreds of millions of dollars if these things are discovered. And from a employee's perspective, doing two jobs is just illegal. Uh, I'm not going to get into whether uh, the rules have been framed the right way. Maybe the rules were framed 50 years back when uh, all these things never existed, but they do not may not may not make sense for the new age and the tech jobs. But as per the legal laws in the country, you cannot be doing two full-time jobs. So those are the consequences. So in, in terms of one of the questions you could ask is, how is this even discoverable? Like how do companies find out if a person is doing two jobs? Now, actually, it's a very simple way to discover. I was reading a report uh, in the newspaper, which again links back to a post made by one of their uh, employees and managers that there's something called PF contributions, provident fund and gratuity contributions by the government. So it depends on how much salary you make. So PF and gratuity is based as a fraction of the total compensation you make and your basic salary and so on. As per the PF guidelines, legally, only one company can pay into your PF account at one time. If there are more than one company paying to your PF account, provident fund account, which, that clearly means that you're doing two jobs. And whenever this happens, the, the PF authorities is going to alert both the companies saying that there's something wrong here. The employee is probably doing two jobs, which is um, which means that you're trying to get two PF transmissions made by the government into your account and the government cannot be paying two times for you doing two separate jobs so so you're ultimately you're trying to con the government and that's not okay with the government so it's very easily discoverable the pf authorities are going to alert the companies that this is happening in terms of what you should do i would say that if ever you're caught in a scenario where you have two you have two great options and you're deciding what to do please choose one of the jobs as much as possible. If you want to do a job full time, then you have to choose only one job. I mean, very early on in your career, I just don't think it's worth the risk to be taking like two separate jobs and ruining your resume. And then if there's ever a reference check in the future, you'll be caught and you'll be in a very bad spot. So I would really recommend that if you really want to do two jobs, please reach out to your company HR, talk to them, tell them that you don't want to do like one full-time job, you want to work on two jobs. So they may actually end up changing your delegation from full-time to part-time. You could become maybe like a freelancer, like two freelancing jobs that could actually make more sense for you. So either get legal opinion or talk to the company HR team. And because the companies need employees, especially in the tech sector, they will try to find a solution. Do trust HR to find a good solution for you. Do not do two full-time jobs at the same time. It's just not okay. In terms of the long-term impact, I would say that if you're doing these jobs, you get caught, discovered. So what are the consequences? I think part of the consequences is that it's going to go into your personal file somewhere. So sometime in the future, if you're being considered for critical jobs, for example, if you rise up the hierarchy and somebody does a background check, they're going to talk to the respective employers. They may look at your personal files and find that you are doing two jobs. I feel that it's a mark of unscrupulousness, which means that it's a mark of a cheat that you have been trying to do two jobs. So you may not really make too much additional money by doing these things, but the the reputational cost is going to be very high if you get caught. So I would say it's just not worth it in terms of the long-term impact on your career success and so on. I would say that 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line, many of you who are working as software engineers are probably going to be software directors, software VPs, traveling around the world. There are not enough engineers coming out of US. So a lot of the Indian IT engineers are going to be traveling across the world and getting very high uh, fancy jobs. So if you're going to get all these fancy jobs, if you have a black mark very early on in your career, it's going to hurt you very bad later on. 
So this might be the difference between you becoming a vice president or now you not becoming a vice president, you becoming a CEO or not becoming a CEO. And you're talking about maybe a couple of lakhs here and there, a couple of thousands of dollars here and there, and it's just not worth this trouble. So I would strongly discourage people saying that please don't do moonlighting, don't do two jobs, dual employment. Please talk to your HR team, find a solution in terms of maybe doing two part-time jobs or you doing just one full-time job. Thanks. So if you have any comments or questions, let me know below in the comments about any other questions you have and do subscribe to the channel and click the bell button so that you keep getting reminders as and when I post videos. Thanks folks. I really appreciate the time you spent to watch my video.